what we are going to be doing here today. We're getting rid of our stock brake and clutch control. Now that we've done away with our electrical switch housings, they just look kind of weird, huge with these big blunt ends. Uh, so we're gonna be swapping those out. <laughs> First, we're gonna let the slack out of our clutch cable here. That way we got a bunch of slack up here. Since we're going to be controlling the, or changing this lever out, pin. Ta-da. Clutch cable free. Creating more parts for our lovely uh, eBay store. Someone's gonna need this, right? Normally I'd put a tank cover on doing this, but it just wouldn't look as pretty for the video. These are available on our website, throttleaddiction.com. Come in black, chrome, and polished. We're going with the black variety here. Skew 3388 if you're interested. Comes with a mirror perch. The brake master cylinder seals in these are set up for DOT5 brake fluid, as is the factory brake caliper, so that works handy. It does come with new seals. If you want to use DOT3, DOT4, um, you can swap out the seals in that. But we're going to run DOT5, so we don't need to worry about those parts pieces. The clutch lever is the standard barrel style that your OEM uh, Harley clutch will have if you have this, this year Sportster here. So nothing to do there, pretty simple. So with that, we're going to get these guys thrown on, show you how to properly adjust the clutch, hook up our brake line. Hopefully we have all the fittings we need. First thing I'm gonna do is take our clamp apart over here on the bench. All right, get that pulled off, and then I'm going to pull our clutch cable pin off. Just got a little keeper. Pry that guy off. Now we can take our pin out. So we'll set those aside. Go get this hooked up. Your one inch diameter for our one inch bars. They're roughly located for now. We'll come back, sit on it, get them exactly where we want. We are going to get our clutch cable thrown on there. Barrel end, clutch pin, just the same as the OE style, so that's pretty handy. Let me figure out how I want to run this. Well, something like, like so. Once we got our end in there, we're simply going to push our pin down in, making sure we have these little little bushings. One goes on top, one goes on bottom, and then we're going to put our clamp there on the bottom. Slide it over here. We'll probably drop this about 14 times before uh, we actually get it on there, but that's that's all right. We'll we'll win. One, two, <laughs> three. Ta-da, three times, just three, not 14. Don't need a whole lot of tools, not very difficult, doesn't take much time, but we're gonna show you the proper way to adjust your clutch free pull. First thing we're gonna do is take all the slack out of our clutch cable. So we're gonna loosen our jam nut, and then we're going to tighten this, taking all the slack out, until it's seated and that's going to make our cable super loose. Now we're going to take off our derby cover. Since you're taking this thing off anyways, it's kind of boring. It's not very cool. Jump over to throttleaddiction.com. You can get custom derby covers. Pull this off, set her aside. Got this little spring guy right here. We're gonna pop that off. With it comes this lock nut. Sometimes that'll stick on there. Sometimes it's stuck to the spring. So we're gonna take the spring off, take this lock nut off, 
set those aside. With all the slack out of our inline adjuster there, we're gonna come up here, we're gonna make sure our clutch cable end is seated nicely into our clutch, which it is. The other thing to make sure is that the ends are all in your clutch cable, so everything's in the home it needs to be. Flathead screwdriver right here in the center. We're gonna screw this counterclockwise till it just seats. Do it a couple times, you get a feel for kind of where it just goes. Light spin and it says, I'm seated. From there, we're gonna back it off roughly a quarter turn. Seated, quarter turn. We're gonna take our lock nut with the protruding round side facing out. And we're going to line that guy up. And if your points on the hex don't quite line up, just give it a little clockwise turn until it lines up and seats down in there. This is very important. Don't forget your spring. If you wanted to replace your O-ring, good time to do it. Got all that set. Now we're going to uh, install our custom cover here. Uh, there are less vulgar ones on the website as well as we do custom whatever you want. I'm just gonna reuse that old O-ring. Spring lined up, push her home. Install our new hardware here that comes with some Loctite. These covers come in gloss, matte, as well as wrinkled black. We got our clutch adjusted in here, our brand new cover on. As you can see, still uh, lots, of, lots of play in here. So now that that's adjusted, we're gonna bounce back up to our inline cable adjuster here. Just going to start taking slack out of that. Try about there. Come up to our lever here. Give her a little wiggle. You do not want this to be completely tight out of slop. You want about an eighth inch is the magic number uh, of play in here. You'll kind of get the feel from it for it. 16 to an eighth of an inch is, is correct. I'm just kind of keeping tightening here, tightening, tightening, tightening. All right, now we come back up here, give her a wiggle. Now we have no play. So that means we're too tight. So we're gonna loosen up here kind of while wiggling. And that's about where I like it right there. So once we're happy with that 16th to an eighth of an inch, feels good, not too, too tight on there. Give her a couple pulls, make sure everything does what it should. Now we are going to tighten down our jam nut. This is important. If you don't do this, your adjuster will uh, not stay at the set adjustment. Slide our little boot up here. It's usually easier said than done. That's why these always end up tore. Oh, yep, yep. Right like that. And that is how you properly adjust your clutch. Now we're gonna bounce over to the right side and do the brake. Here's our brake control lever. And in, in, in comparison here, right? Much smaller, cleaner, tighter. Um, so we've undone our brake line here. This takes the same banjo bolt, same size as your OEM one. So we got that off ready. Uh, now we're just going to undo our clamp bolts. All right, so we're gonna go get this installed first roughly where we want it, and then we'll jump on and fine tune later. Now we're going to get our hose installed. Got our ceiling washer, and then our second ceiling washer. Aim in the way we want her. And give her a little snug up. Now we're going to fill our reservoir and get her bled. So before we bleed the brakes, gonna kinda 
explain what that is, uh, the concept behind it. it. Might help you understand maybe uh, a little better. So all brake systems are is simple hydraulics. So as we squeeze our lever, pushes a plunger, it's pushing that fluid down to our caliper, caliper squishing the rotor, making it stop. Uh, as we replace controls, we rec replace lines, different components that enters, allows air to enter into that system. So now when we squeeze our lever, it's pushing our fluid, but it is running into pockets of air. Air can compress, so it's compressing the air rather than going down and squeezing our caliper. So simple terms, all bleeding brakes is, we're bleeding the air out of the system, so it's 100% hydraulic fluid, brake fluid, all the way from the top to the bottom. A couple ways to do that. The old school way, squeeze the lever, squeeze the lever, hold. As someone's holding, someone's breaking your bleed screw, which is then pushing fluid and air out. Uh, you're refilling, doing that again, doing that again, till all the air uh, is out of there. The really only way to tell if the air is out is by feel. It'll stiffen up uh, and you'll have good, good uh, brake uh, lever feel there. Second way is by using a simple little vacuum pump like this. All that does is allows you to open your bleed screw, put vacuum on your bleed screw, and it's just going to create suction from your master cylinder reservoir down, 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 down to your bleed screw. Theory there, you don't have to have two guys, you don't have to have someone pumping, you don't have to keep pumping, cracking your bleeder, you put a vacuum on it, as long as you're keeping your reservoir full, you're sucking all the air out of the system, keeping one continuous flow of fluid all the way out. Again, uh, no real way to tell if there's a little air in there other than by feel. If you have a spongy brake lever, you feel like you really got to pull it hard, pull it far before it does anything, um, then you, you probably have a little air in there. The third way, probably my favorite way, uh, don't have my, uh, my syringe here to do it this way, so that's why we're using the vacuum bleeder, uh, but my, the third way is to pressure bleed. Uh, in that way, so rather than suction where we're putting fluid up top, sucking it down through here, we fill up a syringe with fluid, hook it to our bleed screw, and push that syringe, which then pushes the fluid down all the way up. The air likes to rise anyway, so that helps push any air up. You don't have to worry about continuously filling your reservoir. Um, because you're not sucking out of that, you're literally pushing up into your reservoir. Once it pushes up, you can see the bubbles, see everything come up, and when your reservoir is filled up, you're good to go. System takes DOT5, which is not horrible for your paint, like three and four is, which is a nice bonus. Three and four are uh, glycol-based, and glycol-based, Brake fluid for reasons I'm not smart enough to know. Eat paint. DOT5 is silicone based and will not eat your paint. Never mix. Three, four with five. Or to do terrible things to your seals and all sorts. This thing is going to be real fun to bleed because it has the smallest reservoir in America. First thing I'm going to do here is just crack our the other end of our line and just be patient for a moment while that kind of gravity bleeds. Keeping an eye on our reservoir because we don't want that all to bleed out, suck down because then you're getting air in it and we're starting all over. Now that we're getting fluid out there, we're going to snug that guy up and our line should be pretty well bled. Now we're going to bounce back up and top off our reservoir again. Give her a few squeezes. You can see there's a whole bunch of air bubbles in there. Keep squeezing her. I'm starting to get a little resistance. Also making a mess. They go hand in hand. Keep squeezing until we 
Don't see bubbles. All right. Now our line's bled. Our master cylinder is relatively bled. Top her off. Again, especially with these tiny reservoirs, as soon as you suck air through there, you're starting over. We're just going to put a little suction gun on here and pull a suction on it. First of all, I guess. Crack that loose. All right, now. We're just gonna put a suction on it and crack our line here. Big thing, again, not letting it empty our reservoir. Sucking some air, starting to get a little fluid. Stop there, make sure. All right, still st lots to go. There we go. So we're starting to get some fluid going there. As you can see, it's a different color, which is kind of nice. The DOT5 we use is purple, so now we can kind of go until we see purple. I'm gonna check my reservoir again. And more of the same. So this is why I like to pressure do them because you just start at the bottom and shove it up so you don't have to worry about this part. Starting to get purple fluid here. So it should be pretty well bled. We're gonna call that good. See how we, how we did here. Top her off one more time. Clean up my mess here. Give her a little test squeeze. Full pumps. Oop. Full faithful. Stiffen up. All right, feels pretty good. Level looks good. Wipe her off, put our cap on. These do have a little sight gauge, which is nice. Pull our bleeder off, all done with that situation. Clean that guy up, put our little bleeder cap on. One more snug up. We're gonna loosen these up and just get them set to where I like them. Perfect. There you have it. We have now successfully cleaned up our front end. If you like this uh, lovely little Sportster hardtail here, uh, missed any of that, jump on our YouTube channel. There's a bunch of videos on building this thing, going through parts and pieces, what we did. Um, if you like these parts, these pieces, throttleaddiction.com. Pick yourself up some chopper parts. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.